Hi, I've clicked on to today's tropical tidbit for Saturday, July 13th. Here in the Atlantic, uh, these are the remnants of Chantal here moving uh, up towards the Carolinas. This is the mid-level center uh, that came up east of the old low-level center, which was a, a wavelet uh, southeast of Miami that uh, kind of dissipated into the flow and is kind of moving up this way, kind of the way we described, but this mid-level one here keeps blowing up convection. That's coming up, bringing rain into the Carolinas, not really expected to develop. It's just running out of time. There's a frontal boundary over the Gulf of Mexico here. The GFS has tried to spin up a little bit of a low south of the Gulf Coast. That's likely to stay non-tropical and, again, not have uh, very much time uh, before coming ashore, but enhanced rain in this entire area is expected. Uh, this is the southern half of Chantal, her other half uh, tropical wave coming towards the Yucatan. I mentioned that this should be warily watched, no model support for development here. You can see it's putting up thunderstorms underneath of a ridge. Always worth keeping an eye on that, but realistically chances are fairly low with this and will just bring rain to this region. Finally, we have an upper level low over the central Atlantic blowing up popcorn convection underneath, which is always something you want to watch because it's coming westward here towards Florida. Remains to be seen whether it will actually end up over the water in the Gulf of Mexico. The European keeps it inland over the Gulf states. Uh, but regardless, should be watched upper lows over warm water for many days at a time. You can see once the popcorn convection goes off, it can start slowly warming the atmosphere above it, and uh, that can turn it into a warm core system. But right now, uh, no model support for that. But when you see a big ridge over the mid-Atlantic states, like you see here at day two on the GFS, it always says, look underneath for the next three to five days. Always got to watch under here when there's a big ridge over the eastern seaboard, so we will keep an eye on that. Uh, but realistically, chances are fairly low with no model support for any development in this region for the next few days. So just a couple of very low chance things to keep an eye on. Now here's the MJO, and uh, right now, it's hard to see, but here's the initialization. It's moving into this inner circle now, and when it moves inside this inner circle, it means its amplitude is fairly low, so it's not a very strong signal, uh, but it's still kind of near, you know, phases two and three in here. And uh, this is favorable uh, for African waves to be strong as they come off Africa, but you can see all the upward motion in green here is now moving off into the Indian Ocean and Maritime subcontinent. See the orange showing up over the Atlantic? This is a suppressive regime where sinking air is occurring over most of the Atlantic uh, west of, you know, about 40 west here. It's still favorable for strong waves to come off Africa, though, and uh, that's something we'll have to keep an eye on for later in the season. And uh, the MJO right now is in a fight uh, with the rest of, uh, well, not in a fight, but the models are in a fight over the forecast for the MJO. You can see the GFS uh, tank tanking it back into phase one. That can really be discounted. The GFS has had a bad bias that direction. Um, and uh, remember, it had it spiking way over here and then coming back. Uh, the European ended up being right that it slowly comes this way. And that is what occurred. But you can see uh, the the spaghetti of all the models sitting in here. Really don't know what to do with it. A lot of them, though, are hinting at it coming back this direction. And if so, it's going to mean a more active August for us. And uh, as soon, the next time it comes back around here, it may play around in here. But even if it does so, the next time we get it in here, we're going to be nearer the peak of the season, August 15th through October 1st. And once we get there, um, the next time the MJO comes around is probably when the season will really start in earnest. Now here's the GFS zero Z run. I want to show you one thing here. This is the 700 millibar height and winds. We're going to count off the tropical waves that come off Africa during the next 15 days. Here's our zero. This is number one coming off right now. Nice strong wave. We go out in time here. There's number two coming off uh, near the Cape Verde Islands. There's three. All right. Then four and then five. So we have a lot of waves coming off and notice how strong they all are um, here at the 700 millibar level and they're really strong at 850 as well. This is indicating a lot of strong waves are still coming off Africa at a high rate. Uh, one it seems every three days about is coming off right now and you see that they're remaining uh, pretty potent as they come westward but right now as of uh, July they're diffusing into the strong trade wind flow near and just east of the Caribbean and this is really what happened to Chantal but the fact that she was able to develop before getting to the Caribbean indicates how uh, the vorticity in here is a little bit more enhanced than usual especially for this time of year and remember July is the least favorable month for African easterly waves. So as we get into August here, especially when the MJO starts coming back around for another um, for another journey into the Atlantic, um, the next time that happens, the trade winds are going to be weaker in here. They're going to be weaker in the Caribbean and the Central Atlantic. And these waves, as potent as they are right now, 
are going to be coming into a more favorable environment. And uh, the I think the Cape Verde season is still going to be more active than usual this year, given how strong the waves are and how favorable this area of the world should be, given that we have a large sprawling high to the north that is really increasing the natural vorticity in this area. And once these trade winds calm down just a little bit more, I think we're going to get more developments in this area. So far this July has actually been pretty active especially since we got Chantal in the deep tropics east of 60 west. That's not something that usually happens. So that means we have to watch down the road in August and September. We could have a decent Cape Verde season this year. And notice how all the waves are also getting farther west. And uh, so far, uh, the high has not in a position to significantly recurve a lot of these things, which means the eastern Caribbean islands and perhaps the eastern U.S. may be under the gun later in the year. But we will have to deal with that pattern when it comes. Hard to predict right now. But so far... Um, July has been active, likely to quiet down a little bit, especially in here uh, during the next two weeks as the MJO is now going into a more suppressive phase. There are just a couple of little systems to watch warily over the next few days, but really no significant or immediate threats. Um, out here, African waves will remain active. Um, none of them are supported by the models to develop for the next week or so. Uh, we will keep an eye on them, though. Uh, it's still July, pretty unfavorable for them to develop once they get farther west. But once we get into August and the next time the MJO comes around, we're going to have to start watching for the season to really kick in, and we might start seeing um, the potential for our first hurricane before long once we get into August. So there's a lot more to go, folks. A lot more to go. All right, that's it for today. Thanks for watching.